after uh, already going through two years of substantial cuts, um, making very difficult decisions um, in our school district, I think we've done all of the the kinds of cuts that you can do around the classroom that are possible. And um, without the referendum, we'll be going into a stage of cost cutting that I believe will begin to impact the classroom in ways we've been able to prevent in the past. And I'll let maybe Mike put a little more detail um, into that answer. Thanks, um, Jen. I think my, my comments would um, simply reinforce the themes you've already mentioned. I don't think it's a great mystery as to what would happen if the referendum uh, were, were not to pass. Uh, we're assuming that the, the state pattern of funding K-12, which is pretty well established now over the last six years, would likely continue. We don't anticipate a big change in state orientation towards K-12 funding. So that, based on that, we assume that we'll see less than 1% revenue growth, maybe three quarters of 1% revenue growth over the next few years. And we'll be making the same types of budget cutting, budget balancing um, actions that we have over the last couple of years. As Jen mentioned, 120 uh, FTE, $8 million worth of uh, uh, personnel and payroll costs were necessary, along with several other <laughs> budget balancing actions. And so, um, so when I say it shouldn't really be a surprise, what I, what I suspect is what you've seen from the district in the last couple of years, uh, you'll see again and again. And it's a pattern that we're concerned about. Before moving on to the next question, I'm wondering, because uh, I think the flip side of that is how it threatens the priority actions that we're investing in every year. Because every year we've, uh, I think have taken a really smart approach to budgeting by identifying a set of priority actions to make progress as a district while simultaneously having to make difficult decisions around cuts. And maybe Nancy could speak a little bit to the impact of not being able to invest in the priority actions that we've been able to invest in these last couple of years. Sure. I think one of the, the areas that you already spoke to was some of the progress that we've made um, around early literacy and students being on track for reading in third grade. I think that's an excellent example where we've invested time, but where we've also made um, critical investments as far as dollars and resources to support that work. Um, for example, in the past year, all of the teachers in our 12 highest needs elementary schools had access to additional professional development around literacy, as well as uh, additional software to support students um, in practicing around some of their foundational literacy skills. These are resources and supports that are above and beyond what we provide other schools in the district. And I think an example of where, when we make strategic investments, that we really see um, the progress and the results pay off. Um, and so in, in budget, I think, uh, difficulties where we're not able to make those investments, it really compromises our ability to see progress and to accelerate the path to closing gaps.